Myself. My name is Lance Laycock, and I'm the senior pastor here at Monroeville, and we are so glad to have you with us today for this communion service. Um, we're going to have a moment of prayer here, and I'm going to turn the microphone to Pastor Abraham Simon, who's going to bring the word today, and then we'll go to communion, and, and then a closing song at the end. If, um, if you are not a member here, uh, you are welcome at our communion table. If you believe in Jesus, that's between you and him, and that's good enough for us, and, and you are welcome to participate with us here as a guest at our communion table at Monroeville Assembly of God. wanted to let you know about a couple things for this weekend. Tonight at 7 o'clock over at our Lower Borough Campus, a Borough Community Church, they'll be showing the movie The Passion of the Christ, and that's, we've done that here at different times on Good Friday. It's a, it's a great way to spend a couple hours on Good Friday if you're really wanting to try to get in touch with what the Lord has done for us and just really think about all that he went through. You could go and, and view that movie tonight with them over there at Borough Community Church. Tomorrow night here in the sanctuary at 6 o'clock, we have our first um, Saturday evening service, uh, and we are launching that as a weekly event now starting uh, tomorrow night. So we encourage you to come and be a part of that service. If uh, That might be a nice option for you instead of Easter Sunday morning, but if you want to come on Easter, there we have services here at 9 and 11 o'clock as we'll be looking at a couple more resurrection questions, questions that Jesus asked people after he rose from the dead. We have two more of those this Sunday. And I think you're going to find them interesting and, and, uh, and challenging this Sunday morning. Or tomorrow night will be the same message. So um, I know you were standing for a while, but could I ask you to stand again as we pray? As, as we were approaching this service today, I just felt led to, to take some time on this Good Friday service to pray. I was, I was thinking about the, the characters involved in the, in the story of what happened when Jesus was arrested and betrayed and, and um, cruci tried and, and crucified. Um, thinking about the characters, and a lot of the people involved in that story are really hurting, and some of the people are really confused. This is not what they thought was going to happen. And so they're very confused and distressed. And um, just felt today that I wanted to pray for a couple things. One, I wanted to pray for people that are hurting and or confused today. And then also, um, I wanted to pray for people that have strayed from the Lord. So somebody near and dear to you, somebody that you love and, and care for, and they have strayed away from the Lord. We want to pray for them today. All right, can we do that? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this day and what it represents, Lord. <clears throat> it was your plan to redeem, and there needed to be an offering and a sacrifice, and Jesus was willing to be that. And we are so grateful. We just thank you so much for the cross. It's, it's, it's brutal and, and rugged and deadly, and yet we sang today, oh, the wonderful cross. Because we know, we know what it means, and we know how lost we are without it. And so it's a wonderful cross. It's blood-soaked, splintered. And yet, we are grateful, and we consider it a wonderful cross. Lord, today I pray for those that are hurting, those that are confused, those that are standing here on March 25th of 2016 and saying, this is not how I thought it was going to go. This is not how I thought life was going to be. And uh, Lord, there's some confusion and distress in hearts and in minds. And Lord, we ask you to come alongside today as the resurrected Jesus, the Jesus who is alive and well, and active, and still speaking to hearts. And we ask you to come into this room and speak to your people and pull that one aside, Lord, and just whisper in their ear what they need to hear in this moment, Lord, and invite them into a close walk with you, a closer relationship with you as they come to know you, even through a difficult and confusing season of their lives, Lord God. 
And Lord, today we also pray for those that have strayed, the, the prodigals. Lord, I pray for, for those that have already done so. And Lord, for, for all of us in this room, Lord, we have to recognize the potential we have to stray. That when you predicted that one around the table would betray you, the disciples started to ask, is it I? Is it I? Because with honest hearts, we all recognize the capability we have to turn our back on you. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd keep us safe, Lord, in your love. Keep us close to you. Keep us in your grace, Lord. Help us to walk in faith every day and to walk in dependence on you, God. Lord, we pray for those that have strayed, God. And, and Lord, we pray you'd hear the cry today of, of a mother and father, a, a grandparent, um, a son or a daughter, crying out for their their friend, Lord, that husband or wife, that child that's crying out for a wayward parent. Lord, I pray you'd hear those cries today and begin to, to put together your plan, the, the scheme that you have devised to bring these people back to you, Lord God. We ask you to, to bring it to completion, Lord. Father, we pray you'd work with their hearts, God. The prodigals that are in the far country, we pray you'd speak to hearts today, bring them to their senses to return to Father's house today. Amen. And Lord, we pray for all of us that as we go out of this place, we would not do what Peter did. Lord, we do not want to deny that we know you. Peter didn't deny who you were. He denied who he was. He denied that he was associated with you. Lord, I pray that each one of us would have the boldness through the Holy Spirit to live our lives in a way that leaves no doubt that we are associated with you. We are connected with you. We are part of your family. We are a follower of yours, Lord God. Lord, I pray you give us boldness through the power of the Holy Spirit to live for you and to speak for you. Thank you for the life you've given us. Thank you for the death you had to suffer in order to give us that life, God. And give us grateful hearts today, we pray. And everybody said, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, before you're seated, take a moment, say hi to somebody. And just let them know that God loves them. You might not be aware. We had an awesome time of worship, and we are now entering into a time of worshiping the Lord in the Word. Turn with me to the epistle of Galatians, written by Apostle Paul, chapter 6, and I will read verse 14. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Father, speak to us. Bless us, Lord. Enable me to speak your word in your precious name. Amen. I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to all of you on this day of Good Friday as we celebrate the supreme sacrifice of our Lord. And also, especially, I would like to welcome all our viewers on Jeevan Jyoti, the Light of Life, which is a ministry of MAOG and has been reaching so far to 48 nations of the world. And we also welcome you in the name of the Lord in this day of celebrating our Lord Jesus Christ. In the standards of the world, it's quite natural to always glory in wealth wisdom and riches and apostle paul who is the author of this book this book that is inspired god breath says that i will boast only in jesus christ this man had all the boastings that anybody could make and he had greater things to boast he came from a wealthy family and he was well educated and he had all the power and strength of that time. When he writes to the Philippians church, he writes like this, if somebody has to boast on the flesh, I will boast more. I was born of the stock of Israel, circumcised on the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. Concerning the law, I was zealous and also persecuting the church. But, on that day, as he was 
with that letter from the high priest to persecute the church, he had an, an amazing encounter with Jesus. And that all turned around and had a flip side in his boasting. Today, what I wanted to talk is the boastings of the cross. And Paul brings a new order in the boastings. In, in 1 Corinthians, he says like this, that the preaching of the cross is foolishness unto those who are perishing, but to un, unto us those who are believing is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He says one thing, now let the one who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Makes a reference to Jeremiah chapter 9 where prophet Jeremiah says, let not the wise boast in his wisdom, the strong in his strength, and the, and the rich in his riches, but he may glory in the Lord. Paul, like an astute lawyer, standing in a courtroom is writing to the church of Gal Galatians and saying that I will only boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why to boast in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ? What is so unique when the world is boasting about wealth, riches, and wisdom that I am going to boast only on the cross of Lord Jesus Christ? And he has something to say to us in this morning, in this afternoon time. I will boast on the cross of Lord Jesus Christ because that is the great cross. Cross was the symbol of weakness because Bible says the one who hangs on the cross is cursed. It, it, it depicted wretchedness. But on that cross was displayed God's amazing blessings. When the Lord of glory, when he lay on that cross and when he, when he died on that cross, he redeemed us from the curse of law. Every curse that began from Adam and even to the baby that is going to be born, that is going to be even conceived in a, in, in a mother's womb, Jesus already took it. He took that curse upon, upon himself. He nipped the root of that curse to the utmost. And therefore, you can be set free. If there is somebody sitting in this room and feels that generational curse, this afternoon, I want to tell you the, curse, the cross of Jesus Christ is able to set you free. That, sim, that is not only a symbol of God's blessing, the symbol of God's wrath displayed God's bountiful love. But Bible says, but God demonstrates his love towards us while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Through his blood, he took the wrath on himself when God's Fury was on its fullest force. At the same time, God's love was also displayed. Justice and truth and love met at cross. Cross is the crossroad where God and man meet. Cross is the divine university of God's love. And cross is the, the heart of heart is, is, is in the in God's heart. Cross is not just a wooden replica, but it is the demonstration of God's love towards mankind. And that was displayed in the supreme sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell to the ones who are hearing us, even on the internet, there is only salvation through Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. Symbol, cross was a symbol of weakness. How can a person hanging on the cross display strength? Oh, Bible says, when it did not, oh, please, the world to understand what God made through his wisdom. God chose the foolishness of the world to abase the wise of this world. Hallelujah. He chose the weakest. He chose the unschooled and turned the world around. Oh, this world always glories in the big and the great and the mighty. But Jesus took few fishermen and turned the world around. His enterprise has never shut down. He said, I will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail because he had already paid the capital. And we can be assured that he will give us victory. I remember when I was studying in, 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 in school, one of, one of my, uh, I, I, I did not fare in one of my, my, my classes, and the teacher wanted to reprimand me, and uh, my, my dad went to receive, uh, receive the report from the, from the school teacher, and the teacher said, oh, some of our students are making great grades, 
And my dad said to the teacher, that doesn't determine the, 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 the result of a teacher when the weakest and, and the most foolish child also makes 90%. That is when it is said this class is doing well. That is what is the class of Jesus. Even the weakest and the vilest and the poorest who has no worth and value. Oh, when he comes to the cross of Jesus Christ, there is a supernatural turnaround. And there has been millions and millions of stories that is being written and has been written to the glory of our God. And that is why I boast in that cross, Paul says, that is a great cross. Not only that is a great cross, that is a giant cross. Because that slew many mighty giants, destroyed the work of devil. Devil was the greatest giant that was standing against mankind. He stole stealthily that power and that dominion from mankind. And when Jesus was laid on the cross, oh, he destroyed the works of the devil. Bible says he made a public spectacle on the cross. He then destroyed another giant, that is the death, by raising from the death. He says, I have the keys of death and Hades. Hallelujah. Oh, he rose from the dead. When Paul writes to the Corinthian church like this, if in this life all that the hope we have, and if Jesus has not risen from the dead, we are the most miserable people. But thanks be to God, Jesus has risen from the dead as the first fruits. Hallelujah. And therefore, a day is coming. Oh, the word is going to say, oh, death has been swallowed in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, but the sting of death is a sin. And but thanks be to God through Jesus Christ he has given us the victory not only he lives we will also live oh this life will end and we will have another life and we will all be glorified and he destroyed that giant with the great hope he destroyed the another giant that is sin or oh, that was standing against man the accuser of the brethren Oh, on the cross, oh, that sin of all mankind was laid upon him. Bible says, for he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might be counted the righteousness of God. And therefore, you can go scot-free. Hallelujah. And that is what Jesus did. He's the, he's, the, he's, the, he's the big guy. He's the big man. Oh, you said, oh, put it all on me and let this poor sinner uh, go free. Hallelujah. Oh when, oh, when this Savior of the world was on the cross, even the creation also started shaking. The earth began to shake. The earth began to shake because the Bible says in him everything upholds and together it holds together. Hallelujah. Oh, that is why that is the one who was on the cross was so giant, mightier than all the giants of this world. And you can slay that giant that is in your life. He wiped the law. That was against us. The ordinance, the handwriting of the ordinance that was against you. And blotted it on the cross. Oh, no matter how, how, how crimson your sin is. Oh, he will wipe it as white as snow. I have heard some stories where some vilest criminals have been acquitted. They did a testing on one criminal and found out that there, the DNA of his and the one whom he killed has totally changed because the DNA, because the moment he accepted, the DNA has changed. Now in his veins is flowing the blood of Jesus. The blood has not lost its power. They overcame by the blood of the lamp and by the word of their testimony. Oh, he took upon himself another giant sickness oh all our sickness were nailed on the cross of jesus christ some of the scientists say 39 stripes meant 39 types of sickness in this world 39 categories oh when we pray in the name of jesus there is healing to in this afternoon time anybody hearing under hearing under my voice is under a sickness in the name of jesus i want to declare and decree that you are healed in by the blood of jesus christ by the stripes of jesus christ 
And therefore you can say greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Neither death nor life, things present to come, nor sword nor perils can separate me from the love that is in Christ Jesus my Lord. That is why Paul says this is a giant cross. It is a great cross. It's a giant cross. Not only that, it is a glorious cross. Because on that cross lay the Lord of glory. Had they known the one who was the Lord, all the rulers of that time would not have crucified the Lord of glory because he embodied the whole, whole divinity of heaven on earth. When they made the tabernacle, they made with acacia wood and on it was overlaid the gold. Gold represents the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ and on the cross when he lay was the divinity oh much purer and brighter than all the gold of this world. My Jesus was lying, the Lord of glory, hallelujah. The glory that was heavier and weightier than all the glory men of this world can boast about. Hallelujah. The glory of the highest lay on the cross. Bible says he is the he is the express image and the radiance of his glory. And he is the he, by his word of his power he holds everything and he created everything for him and for his good pleasure. And that glory of the highest lay on the cross and that is why I boast in my Jesus Christ that is a glorious cross. Not only that is a glorious cross because of that that cross is his glory is holy because there was the purity he was sinless or oh, there was no guile in him or oh, even when sin was laid upon him he was fully holy he was fully righteous there was no compromise on his character that is why the standard of God is so high he is holy so be holy hallelujah that glory had preeminence because he had all the dominion and power far above all powers and principalities. And he, he laid it and brought under his feet so that church, you and I, the body can enjoy to be having that joint heirs of that inheritance. As I close, I want to bring two stories to your attention. One is from India. I'm so thankful that we sang some great songs on cross. One of the songs that was sung was the song on which I grew. My dad loved it so much when I surveyed the wondrous cross. There is one stanza, one line, where it says, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. I remember this reading the story of this, this uh, communist Maoist group man who was with this gang uh, sitting in a room and the police was hunting for him. And far, far, far away there was in a church, they were singing the song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And when he heard that song, the last line, love so amazing, so divine. There was something that was pulling inside him that uh, they were playing cards in that room with his uh, five other friends. He walked away from there and he ran to listen to there. There he gave his life. He did not know what happened. Later on when he came back to his room, five of his friends were caught by police. Two died in police encounter. Oh, cross can save you. Oh, hallelujah. There is a call that says, love so amazing, so divine, so demands my soul. There's another story from Britain. My boy was playing, and as he was playing in his street, he lost and went few streets away. And he was crying, and a cop asked him, why are you crying, son? He said, I lost my way. So how can we find the, find the house? And he said, there is a church, and there is a cross on that church. Take me to the cross, and I will find my way. Hallelujah. Take me to the cross, and I will find my way. Brothers and sisters, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ was not something weak. Oh, it was a glorious cross. It's a joint cross and a great cross. Hallelujah. If any of you have not received Jesus as your personal savior, this is the bell blessed moment. A day is going to come when God is going to judge the secrets of all men. To be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. After death, there is a judgment that is waiting everyone. 
If you have not placed your trust in Jesus Christ, I want to say with all love and humility that there is only salvation in Jesus Christ. No karma will save you through the grace and grace alone are you saved. You might not really understand it, but I want to tell you that's all the way. He is the savior of the world and through, through him only you can be saved. A day is coming, God is going to judge the secrets of all men. And if you are the one sitting in this room or watching us on, 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 the, on the internet, I want to tell you, receive Jesus as your personal savior and you shall have eternal life. That cross will change the story of your life. Oh, the wonderful cross that bids me. Oh, your history, you're, you're about to change the history and your course of your life. Jesus is giving a new order. No more glorying in the wisdom and in the riches and in the wealth of this world, but to only glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Father, I pray for everyone who heard this word. Lord, minister to them. Lord, I especially pray for the ones who do not know you, Lord. Please speak to them, Lord. Lord, let this word reach to their hearts and may they realize you are the only savior of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for this precious time. In your precious mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you. Pastor, thank you for that word. Thank you for that powerful word. He was in Galatians 6, his main verse, in verse 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. That's what he does, isn't it? That's what the Lord does. He makes new creations out of us. You spoke about the creation. Pastor Hart spoke about creation and from the foundation of the world, and yet there's a new creation. And uh, Jesus, when he rose from the dead, was the first fruits of that, and then he shares that with us, and we get to be part of the family of God. Awesome. So the cross is something we boast about. The cross is something we brag about. We don't brag about ourselves, but about the Lord. Amen? Amen. I want to invite Pastor Rob and the ushers to please come and, and uh, serve communion. What we ask you to do is just um, keep that piece of bread and that cup until everybody's been served. And um, I've got a couple of ladies from the congregation that I've asked to help with communion today as far as praying. So they'll be joining me here in just a moment. As they are moving among us today, let's take some time and reflect on what Pastor just shared with us. Let's take some time and reflect on the cross and all that it means to us. Can we do that? Let's just take a moment in silence as they're, as they're ministering here. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your love for us. That scripture we just looked at recently, this is love. Not that we loved you, but that you first loved us and sent your son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
Lord, we thank you for being the door, the entrance to eternal life. You are the gate. There is no other way. Anybody that tries to enter another way is, is being deceptive. But Lord, you are the door. And because you open wide your arms on that cross, you're able to open wide that door to heaven. And you've invited all of us to come in. Lord, we do pray for those viewing on the internet and those that are in the room who may not know you yet. Lord, I pray that they would get that sense right now, that overwhelming love of God. They really consider the cross and think about what you've done for us. We do glory in the cross. Lord. And Lord, as we share this communion today, we do commit ourselves to following you, Lord. As you said in your word, if anybody, anybody wants to follow me, they can. But they're going to have to deny themselves daily, take up a cross, and follow. And so, Lord, we're going to embrace the cross that you have for us. And though it was not, uh, the cross that you embraced was not pleasant at all, Lord. And there are times that the things you ask us to embrace are not pleasant, Lord. For the joy set before us, Lord God. For what we know that that suffering and those difficulties and those sacrifices, that self-denial. We know what that works for us in heaven. We know there's joy waiting for us because of it, Lord. We will carry ours. We'll take it up every day and carry our cross and follow you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That wonderful cross bids me come and die. Come and die so I can truly live. Church, can you just put that in your own words for a minute? And just, just tell the Lord that you're willing to lay down your life. He laid down his life for you. Let him know you're willing to lay down your life for him. Lord, in the little things and the big things, God, we're going to put you first put ourselves to the side, die to ourselves, Lord, and walk as you'd have us to walk, Lord. Challenge us today with the cross, Lord. We celebrate in it, we boast in it, but Lord, we're also challenged by it today. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask Joy Rosendale to join me here and Sue Kranick, or Sue Rogalski, excuse me. I did that wedding a few years ago. I should know your last name. Rogowski. And um, I've asked these ladies who are just uh, they're precious and they're leaders and, and servant leaders among us and prayer people. And I've asked them if they would pray. Joy's going to pray over the bread and lead you to take the bread together. And then Sue will pray over the cup and lead you to take the cup together. Dear Jesus, we come to you today. We love you, Lord. And thank you that you gave your body for us. You had a healthy body. You had a happy body. You had a strong body. And you went to the cross, and your body was broken by taking into yourself our sins. You took our sins right into your body, Jesus. You took our sickness right into your body. You took our sorrows, Jesus. Our sorrows broke you, Jesus. Our sins and sickness broke you. You were broken on the cross for us. And Lord, you want to do an exchange with us. When we take this emblem, which is your body, into ourself, Lord, we're taking your life into ourself. We're taking your joy into ourself. We're taking your love into ourself. We're taking you into ourself, Jesus, through this emblem. And Lord, we ask you to make us strong in you. We ask you to make us healed in you, Jesus. Make us holy in you. We ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, you came to create a body of Christ on the earth that could reveal you. And Lord, it's as we take your body into ourself, let your life permeate us and make us new people, then we can rise up as a strong body of Christ, sharing you with the whole world. So Jesus, we come to you on this Good Friday saying thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for being so wonderful. And we submit to everything you died to give us on the cross. We take, a, we 
let us, brothers and sisters, take this emblem, and as we're eating it, we're committing ourselves to Jesus. Lord, from the beginning of this service, from Pastor Hart's prayer, and Lord, uh, it, the, the word has been love. Lord, that's what this uh, cup represents. It represents the greatest love mankind will ever know. Lord, and when we think about that, Lord, it, it causes us to weep. Pastor, ask us to think about that. Lord, that's what we need to do this day. Think about what you've done for us. When I was thinking about this, I thought Jesus said that sometimes you'll lay down your life for sometimes a good man. But, Lord, you laid down your life for us, Lord. We were without hope in this world. We were rebels. And, Lord, it, while we were still sinners, you died for us. That's an amazing thing to think about. And, Lord, um, as we were here on Wednesday night for the service, Laurie showed a, a, just a short film clip that shows what sin is and what love is. She showed a picture of um, a city in Syria that was nothing but a, a bombed out wreckage, devastated, empty, just a, a heap of ashes. And yet on a wall, a blackened wall, someone wrote in white letters the word love. That's what this cup represents. It represents your love, your great love for us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this cup, Lord, this cup of love. We thank you for every drop of blood that fell from that cross, Lord, that makes us clean, white as snow. Let's take that cup together. Praise the Lord. We have so much to be grateful for. Amen. Amen. We're going to close the service today by singing a beautiful song of worship to the Lord. So if you'd stand to your feet, that's what we'll do.
Thank you. May the, pray that you guys go and be blessed. Happy Easter. We hope that you will join us to celebrate this weekend, Saturday or Sunday morning. God bless you.